one. Okay, we are live. We are. So, okay. Nice. Let's start and talk. Well, maybe I'll, I'll put the context in place. So, well, this is the zero podcast uh, in some series of podcasts around embedded system. And uh, the idea would be that we, you know, just randomly talk and then Somewhere along the way, there would be something useful that, you know, the listeners can take away. Uh, the idea is to raise awareness around embedded system, you know, how important it is. Um, much like the computer sciences uh, and the whole, uh, you know, popularity of um, BS Ergo, uh, we would want to kind of, you know, raise the awareness around embedded system and make it as popular as uh, DSA and algorithms. Uh, uh, and and then also the plan is that you know somehow the embedded system personally I feel where the magic is you know that's the closest you can get to be a real life magician. Well, of course there are other streams, but this is my personal favorite, and that's how I think about it. And yeah, with that uh, you know it's uh, four of us out of the five of us, and um, maybe let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. So go ahead, who goes next? But I um, use my oh, uh, I was about to say you should go first. Yeah. Anyway, Good. so hey, I am Mohammed, uh, one of the uh, people from the In Pajama group. So we are the In Pajama boys. Uh, maybe yeah, I will just you know want to add on to what you should said about the middle systems. I feel like I know if anyone who likes coding, uh, where you know. Uh, we want to not just code, but see what difference the code made or what it actually outputted, not just on a screen, but by actually moving something physically, by gluing something, by, you know, forming a series of uh, circuits, which then gives feedback or triggers another thing, another circuits. I think embedded system is the place to be. and. That is where I got introduced in my BTEC. Prior to that, I was not even knowing what is embedded system. I was like, you know, focusing on DSA, uh, building web apps, you know, which I hated, by the way. Uh, CSS, HTML started off with that, then JavaScript and all. I mean, it has its own uh, upsides. It has its own pleasures. I would not uh, deny that. But then it doesn't do much in terms of, you know, satisfaction. I think if you want to get satisfaction by running our code, uh, by actually seeing how everything works uh, under the hood, I think embedded system is the place to be. And I started off with Arduino uh, and now, you know, we've come across a long way and I am really glad I made the decision back then uh, and hoping to continue on this journey. Okay, uh, I, I'll go next, I guess. So, yeah. Hey guys, uh, my name is Dev Vishnoi, and I'm, as Mohammed said, I'm one of the person uh, in embedded group, uh, Pajama group. And yeah, I think uh, my journey was interesting. Uh, I actually hated uh, embedded systems during my college. I did not like it at all. <laughs> I, I came from a computer science background and all I learned during my college was DSA, data structure and algorithm. I, you know, uh, most of the coding platform, I did a lot of coding. I solved most of the questions, uh, you know, on, you know, gigs for gigs, you know, lead code, uh, code chef, the code forces and everywhere, you know, at any, any famous coding platform. And I have, you know, had, had some my hand on that, but yeah, I I joined this team as a you know, like I joined Google as a software engineer uh, working on uh, Android software stack, and then I you know somehow got uh, a chance or opportunity to move uh, to embedded uh, you know role, and and because of you know the you guys uh, you know. I joined that team. I didn't know what I would be doing, but 
you know given the circle the you know the group of people you know i wanted to join this uh, you know team mm-hmm. and i joined that and then you know now i am here uh, it's been four years right yeah <laughs> i think one of one of the you know instance i remember uh, so one of one of my friend uh, he is you know working in in some uh, you know uh, some company uh, software company and they you know work on java javascript and all those you know uh, things and we were discussing something and uh, he you know i i somehow mentioned that like that we were discussing a coding problem uh, you know some software stack problem and uh, you know he mentioned that you know that there was some problem and i mentioned that i would go ahead and you know disable the, all the caches and it should solve the problem he was like how would you disable the caches man i said i would run a set of registers and it would disable the cache like he was like you can't do that there's there's no yeah. you know we, we can't do that and i was like i am an embedded engineer working on these things we can directly control the hardware and through mm-hmm. that we can solve that problem right so i i, I, I was just you know uh, giving you an example that uh, mm-hmm. you know this is how you know we can impact right this is uh, you know you know in, in in the software stack people wouldn't you know uh, you know believe to do something like this on hardware right they would like okay for them it's totally black magic right they you know if we say okay i can do this uh, you know i can program this device they would say okay i don't know how to do that and mm-hmm. so they would you know work on on you know very very abstraction uh, you know set up you know apis right so i think that empowered me that i am doing something special uh, you know i can uh, you know uh, the people wouldn't thought about doing that and i can do that and and it could really you know change the hardware state right so you know from that perspective i stayed in the team uh, you know i joined you know i uh, loved you know all the learnings in the embedded domain and i want to continue that it's it's a really you know great interest you know uh, great uh, uh you know journey so far and i would love to you know you know go ahead and you know work along with you on this pyjama project that's uh, that's very interesting i would say but yeah. i know save since like 2019 and i have seen you know your journey as well uh, yeah. i also remember the word you know Times when maybe you thought about okay, I should return to the software line. Right. I suppose that you talked about disabling patches to <laughs> yeah. overcome all. Yeah. So, I think that yeah. was yeah. Cool. Cool. Go ahead. Do you want yeah. to go next? So I guess I will go next. So yeah. I'm Rohit. I joined Google around a year back before that. I have served for multiple semiconductor companies. I think I I share the same background as Piyush. Never has been in computer science or software. Always been an electronics guy. Started my college as electronics guy. Went into electronics guy. And honestly, I always loved embedded. Even since my college days. Uh, so one of the things that really excites me about embedded is whenever people come up and say that Intel 11th generation processor is coming and it's gonna have two MB more cache, three pipelines extra. i can relate to how it will it is going to impact my performance and whether it makes sense for me to go for that next processor or not and this has always excited me like when people talk about things i can understand what they are talking about and not just follow some random youtube guy and build a my computer okay. yeah yeah and i think what excited me about this whole in pajama idea is seeing how the gen- next generation is so much focused on bsa that even when they join embed they lack so much basics of the embed where you mm-hmm. talk about something and they're like what as like what do you mean by what and there is a famous mean what pointer who pointer where pointer 
I relate to it so much whenever going, I was ever like going to interviews and people are like uh, trying to push DSA into a very simple bit manipulation problem right. that can be solved right. in a single line. Right. And I guess that's where I felt that uh, maybe the we are the books and the whole YouTube is not doing justice to the complete build, and there is a need for people to go into the depth, look into the basics. and try mm-hmm. to understand those basics so whenever people ask me how do i get into embed build i how do i learn embed become master at embed i have only one suggestion the only way you do is take a board and start typing there is no other right. secret right. right you get into problems look into google what that problem means then start solving that and that's how you learn right you know the, the learning curve is like slow and steep both and i suppose um you know okay rajat if you uh, can i go ahead and introduce yeah. myself yes. okay perfect so um my name is piyush and uh, you know i also joined google four years back uh, in fact four of us are on the same team uh, we work on the tensor processor um so series that google make and uh, but what we noticed uh, Over the years, is that there is this gap between academia and industry. Like what gets taught in academia, and you know what is expected uh, in the industry. And we thought that hey, you know, we kind of now have the distillation of knowledge enough so that we can you know uh, let the next generation know and kind of help them. Uh, well, maybe not prepare, but kind of give them motivation or be be like the source of information. Uh, for them to aspire to be an embedded systems engineer now that said um, i have a background in electrical engineering so uh, i always like to see uh, you know leds and light bulbs glow uh, that was always my primary motivation i wanted to make things you know glow and move around and uh, yeah i think uh, being able to program a processor from like, from scratch i think that was one of the to dos on my list i want to understand the history of how the processor actually starts booting up how does it control you know it's uh, how can you control the environment using that processor and i think uh, you know in the past one dk dk at least i have had like a very good experience of uh, and a very thorough understanding of how that happens and yeah that's uh, that's about it uh, so And, you know, to be told, and the system, the programming part of it is not actually that hard. Uh, right. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, as one dig, uh, digs deeper, uh, turns out embedded systems is not more about understanding the system than being able to program it. Um, once you understand the system and the requirements and the constraints around it, um, you kind of naturally are able to think about what kind of programs and formulas you need to write. and then you run into those interesting uh, you know situations where in sometimes the processor is kind of just fast enough to deal with some timing constraint and sometimes you know you have to do play some tricks uh, or come up with like a tricky or smart solution to be able to meet the timing constraint on a processor which is let's say advanced so and what we are going to do in these series of podcasts is you know peel the onion around the embedded system and essentially answer any questions that you leave uh, you know in the comment section um, in the following podcast so maybe maybe with that as you know the end to the introduction part uh, can we maybe just talk about what embedded system is for each of you so you know, just to give an introduction as to what different people think of what embedded system is so go ahead do we want to go with uh, mohammed do you want to yeah sure uh i would uh, want to talk about you know how a typical day sort of looks like in 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 a, uh in the life of an embedded engineer so uh, as i think uh, we mentioned uh, it's a lot of information dump at the beginning so the learning curve is uh, sort of slow and steep but once we get a hang of it i think for me you know working in embedded systems field is like literally being a detective basically uh, what i mean by that is you are given a set of uh, uh, well some problem would come along your way right 
and you are given the operating conditions like hey i was doing this 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 and it sort of crashed it hanged you know i'm not getting the output which i expect and you being now uh, the expert around that area maybe or you know just uh, trying to catch up we sort of form a theory okay why it could be the case you know sort of trying to piece together the clues which are provided uh, form a theory experiment most likely it won't work we get new evidence we form another theory cycle goes on and on until it gets solved or you throw away the product two <laughs> <laughs> so one or one of the two cases but mostly i would say it works you know you have colleagues awesome colleagues at your disposal for the help you reach out to the architects for the design you again go with the new info which you just gathered form another theory right. gather more right. evidence it's like that's constant virtuous cycle of trying experimenting uh, learning and mind you you know it may sound like hey this is tedious i wouldn't want to do that but believe me the learnings which you get along the way you know which you won't even expect the issue would be somewhere in the gpu let's say but you would end up learning about the entire system how fabric how fabric works how dram works you know because the issue would would not just touch base on that particular system it would involve almost all of it and solving that you would end up learning a lot more and right. and that way you know slowly and steadily you would gather uh, accumulate enough knowledge to you know just uh, uh, march forward but then it's it's a never ending process you always get to learn more which is the awesome thing about embedded systems yeah i think uh, i uh, this is the best or you know the uh, the i would say the most intuitive way for me to describe uh, how a typical day looks like okay. so i i think uh, like for me uh, you know initially uh, you would have to go through a lot of you know hardware and software architecture spec right you learn about hardware uh, you know how you know different component you know uh, you know get together and you know you know piece together and then you know uh you know solve a very complex problem right and then you know uh once once you are done with the uh, you know the all the you know uh, you know all the learning uh, around hardware spec and all then i think it's like mostly you know uh, just what mohammed mentioned right you know being the detective you know uh, you know uh, you, you get a problem you work on it you you uh, you know Uh, do a bunch of experiments you uh, you know uh, you know come up with some theories right and then you try to prove each theory with with that experiment right and if if some some experiment works then you you know uh, say that okay this is how it uh, happened in the hardware right uh, not not every time we have you know a proper view of uh, entire you know uh, you know state machine of all the hardware components right so that's how we uh, typically do i think from programming perspective uh, uh, you know we, we get to write a lot of drivers a lot of firmware how they communicate with each other you know how you set up a pipeline for a uh, you know workload right so you know you know this kind of you know work you would you know expect in in this domain right Right. So, I guess the biggest difference that I that I feel between software and build is software just ab- assumes debugger works while getting a debugger oh. working on an embed itself is itself, itself a challenge. <laughs> is itself yeah. a challenge. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the things. Uh, so I have been an application engineer for majority of my life, and I have debugged customers' code to <laughs> earn money. So. <laughs> I know the challenges that you face around the bed a lot. So it's not about just your software; it's about your surrounding. It's about what other things are going around in the processes. For example, right. you your software is doing everything right. Your SPI is reading from the flash, but apparently you are not getting the right data. 
you can spend hours and hours debugging that software, but ultimately what you realize when you attach the oscilloscope is that the square waves of spy are actually coming sort of. Yeah. And there's a board integrity issue. Right, right. What can you do right. in those cases? And in that case, you throw away the board. <laughs> you throw <laughs> You throw over the product, you take it to the lab, try to get it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So, by, by the way, I, I must mention at this point that, you know, things of those nature where the signal integrity is compromised, there are also ways to debug that. But that's not in like the embedded software engineers yeah. realm of things. But there are teams and, you know, there are people who are expert at that and can try to do. If that doesn't solve the problem, then of course, throw away the product. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so there are multiple things like that. So you may not realize that, okay, let's, I would give an example of USB, which is very clock zone sensitive protocol. Suddenly it starts re-enumerating and your stack has been working always the same. What you realize is suddenly yeah. the clocks have jitter because the battery you were running on, it is not able to support the PLL. Yeah. But there's yeah. enough load. So there are multiple things that you have to take care of while debugging. It's not only about what's going wrong in my software, it's about what's going wrong in the device. Right. And you have right. to open your mind up looking into multiple components across. And it's very difficult to, you know, like, unlike software where we can separate out the unit and test only a unit and debug only a unit and be like, my unit is right, maybe you are doing something wrong. It is very difficult to do that in a bit because right. everything is interlinked and there are thousands of things happening in parallel right. that may result in things going wrong. Right. And that's what excites me the most. True. And, you know, I have to kind of afford that. The fact that, you know, it's, it's never like a clean boundary that, you know, my API is working and so, you know, I don't own the responsibility of whatever goes wrong, I think that goes that goes into a blur a little bit because collectively the team owns up the project yeah. or the product. And it's always like, uh, so for example, I, I think I'll just uh, uh, quote one of the experiences or kind of uh, quote one of the situations, which is, so I'm working on some part of the hardware, you know, trying to program it. And, you know, I'm seeing that my sequence of programming is correct, but the hardware is not working as expected. So what ends up happening in such situations is, you know, I have to go meet the hardware counterpart, the hardware person who is responsible, let's say, to design it or do the design verification on it, for example. And then I have to kind of talk to them as to, hey, you know, I think I'm programming the sequence correctly. Uh, do we know that the hardware works for sure? And then, you know, both of us uh, sit together and then uh, this person kind of, you know, runs their checks and uh, balances on that, uh, on that, let's say, component. And then all too often it comes out that, you know, okay, that component was not correct, connected correctly or it needed to be enabled, but I wasn't enabling it. So it's always that, you know, I'm never sure that my sequence, my software is complete until my hardware counterpart has also verified and said, you know, okay, we wanted the hardware to be exercised in X way. Uh, you have done that. And, you know, you're using the hardware to the best of its abilities. So I think I, I, I really enjoy that. And um, the fact that you are required to talk to other people uh, while, you know, doing embedded systems, I think that's just great. There is like a social component built into uh, you know, working on an embedded systems team. Now I should also kind of call out because I'm pretty sure if, uh, you know, a lot of our audience, if they're like straight from the college or, you know, initial years of their career, um, how much of a hardware do you really have to know? Because like out of the four of us, two of us come from like the electronics and electrical engineering background. And then the rest of you are from the computer science background, but you are thriving. So one of the myths that we would want to first is, how much of hardware do you really have to know? So maybe, you know, Dave and Mohammed, you can go first and then Rajit, you and I can go last. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I before think... that, uh, sure. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. 
so i think uh, like it's it's all conceptual thing uh, you know you don't really have to you know uh, you know seed and you know you know cram every single piece of you know uh, com- you know hardware component it's all logical things you know coming together and you know working so i think if if you have that uh, you know logical understanding of each component how it works now you don't want to know how it is being programmed right every uh, you know hardware component uh, let's say you know talking about the pci right uh, it could be implemented you know by different vendors by you know differently right its programming sequence could be different you don't have to learn that all you have to do is what it can what it does right and and you know what are the inputs what are the outputs and how it works so okay. the, so this understanding is not can be done by a common person right if if i am a com, you know from a computer background i can understand this sequence that okay you take the data you you know do some processing you, you know, let's let's say you know uh, explaining a you know compute ip right you take the data you do some processing you you know uh, spill out the output right so you all you have to do is to understand the logical component like how mm-hmm. it is how it is working the programming part you know the usual day to day work that you can go you know through this pack and you know figure out so yeah. yeah so it's it's like you know getting to know about the system rather than the program right, right. and everybody okay. mm-hmm. everybody even an it person like a person from uh, you know information technology branch can you know work in the embedded domain without okay. having a prior knowledge to uh, you know you know, a lot of embedded components. So if I may ask, uh, would you comment on how much of electrical or electronic stuff you will have to know to even be able to you know, do anything embedded in your opinion? Like, right. I when, when I joined Google, I didn't know anything. I, all I had was, you know, there is a processor, there is a CPU, there is memory, and you take the data, the CPU takes the data from memory, process it and put it in the memory. Right. right so that's all i knew and from that you know uh, ground information or the ground learning that i had i built on top of that so every day you know you learn something new you learn how this company is working and once you Look. understand mm-hmm. that now it's like it's it's very easy for you to do that by the way i have to call this out explicitly when you say you joined google and you had no idea or you didn't know anything it is more about you know, you didn't know anything about like anything. right it's just yeah. because of you know the yeah. interviewing structure or how you know we select right. people it had to do with that that the yeah. interviews are like more generic and around problem solving right i think yeah. that initially i mentioned that i did a lot of dsa coding <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah but i think this is uh, really i mean uh, google has one of the best interview process right and, Absolutely, yeah. and it i think i was being judged on the uh, you know generic uh, you know sweet right. you know, understanding right? right if i was interviewed for embedded domain i would have been even passed a single interview right. right and i think this gives us a freedom that all you have to do is you have a logical understanding of things you understand the fundamental right Yeah, and you, right. if you get that right then you can build on top of that it, you know wherever you go it's like you know if you go to this android stack you go to the application layer you go in an embedded domain you can do that right right there okay moving on to mohammed then yeah yes uh, first off uh, before i start i would like to upvote on the point you made earlier piyush uh, about you know we are like in embedded world almost all the teams sort of operate in a way where you know in the mode where all are in this together right mm-hmm. we work towards a product not you know hey i designed this software this piece of driver my work here is done it would seldom be the case that it is operated yeah. like that but mostly everyone sort of knows like hey we all are working towards uh, you know building a product so the level of camaraderie uh, seen here is like at the highest levels i would say 
and that really really helps uh, in you know new people gelling in the team very nicely and uh, without much effort uh, so you just come here uh, and to answer the question how much of a electrical or electronics knowledge you would need i would say you just uh, have to answer yourself you know these three questions or find the answer of those three questions mm -hmm. uh, first one is okay uh, what i'm going to work on what software i'm going to write and where where it is going to execute so once you know that you first at least try to find out what type of microcontroller or microprocessor or what core is it and just get you know a uh, hang of its memory model its exception model uh, interrupts how it works and then you get uh, the uh, second one is okay what now you go system level okay what system i'm going to work on so it would be you know comprising of few cores some gpu some dsp it could be you know all sorts of different variants and just get a uh, feeling general feel about that you know how everything is structured uh, uh, what sort of uh, you know memory it is and just kind of get a feel of of the of the flow uh, so that you know we get an idea of a system per se like okay uh, you get the idea of the use case uh, which is going to be running yeah, idea of you know what software is going to touch base on uh, what ips and all and i think that uh, i would say that is pretty much it you just get i mean to get us started this is the only knowledge uh, required basically mm -hmm. just uh, get the info about the core um, i would say memory map uh, the interrupt uh, model the exception model uh, and that's it that's pretty much it and mm -hmm. i believe me i don't have any prior electrical or electronics background even i would say i would confess even now i don't know how to solder <laughs> i can't solder uh, i have tried it's yeah. not for the lack of trying but yeah i can't and somewhere i know like you know i have people to help me with that so okay so yeah. i can count on you yeah. yes yeah. yeah i i will before you know we hand off to rajit i want to make this comment so we talked about keywords like you know ip memory map exception model memory model uh, you know <laughs> instruction fetching like the memory deep memory we, we will kind of have separate podcasts wherein we cover how to go about learning a cpu uh, learning you know an soc we'll take like any any soc that's out there in the in open source community or out there which has documentation out there and we'll just run through that so for our audience like rest assured that you know slowly we'll yeah. cover all the territory go ahead now you and uh, sorry you know, i want to add yeah. one yeah. more point uh, so basically you know uh, you might know that uh, we are planning to release a book soon and i think the mm -hmm. the biggest uh, uh, thing which we are trying to address is actually the mm -hmm. explanation of these things in that book Concepts, i think yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, heads off to piyush basically he is kind of driving that mm -hmm. effort alone and i i have given it a read and believe me i would want i would have wanted it sooner in fact you know when i was in b tech nice yeah. Yeah. good plan <laughs> yeah but i have to I have to mention it's not just the book that's ongoing there are also you know some presentations being built uh, things that you can consume uh, very rapidly within the span of 20 days or so and where it's like you know working very hard on that so the course like something uh, to give a taste of what embedded systems is right Okay, over to you, Rajat. Go ahead. Yeah. It's precisely like that, right? So that's what you love about Embed. It's it's a mix of hardware and software, and you can decide yeah. whether you want to be stronger on a hardware side yeah. or a stronger on a software side. And there is a place for you. So yeah. if you want to be stronger on hardware side, you can be in motor control kind of applications which are more hardware centric, where more debugging goes into the hardware portions of the things. Right. If you want right. to be more right. software centric, you can be on CPU and programming the CPUs, etc., where it's more software centric. And that's just that's just amazing. There is a place for everyone to be. Right. Uh, I remember so precisely answering the question whether you need to learn electronics or not. but learning electronics definitely helps it just cuts yeah. the to and fro communication you have to find the right person who can answer your query whether you yeah. can answer yeah. your query yourself looking at the document yeah. 
but is it mandatory well i don't think so i myself even though i am from electronics background i really sucked at analog when i joined mm. the field <laughs> like it was, i was really bad at it because our curriculum used to cover analog in first two semesters and then the rest three semesters there was no analog in it so by the time you reach it, <laughs> it's gone <laughs> and so i very well remember during my initial days at atman i used to have my friend alta he joined along with me and he was really good at analog but he was a bit uh, tedious at software so we used to help out each other whenever i mm-hmm. used to find a problem which was which is more analog centric i'd be like i'll take and you look at the query and see how we out and over the years you learn the uh, tips and tricks from those people mm-hmm. how to debug yeah. those things around right yeah. right yeah. so what you realize is after after 7 5 6 years of a career what you realize is once now when you start debugging you have in your mind a 10 checklist that maybe if something goes wrong maybe it's one of these 10 problems mm-hmm. and it's wonderful that it almost in 80% cases it turns out to be one of those 10 problems mm-hmm. <laughs> because all SOCs are built in a very similar way and the problems right. are very similar right. to all of them right and right. out of those 80% i think 70% would be caches <laughs> right caches memory <laughs> yeah, you, remember, find, yeah. you find yeah. any runtime issue the first thing you do is disable caches <laughs> that's always the trick <laughs> so, yeah i think that's what it is you don't need a lot of knowledge to start with you get it as you go along as you go, right. go generation after generation of socks you all you will ultimately get to understand all of this right or if i may say you will store all the solution in your caches <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one so you know i'll go ahead and give my opinion on how much one needs to know as rajit mentioned you know knowing electronics and little bit of how electricity works in general uh, well that just helps because you kind of don't question yourself as much uh, the question am i in the wrong place that just reduces you, you kind of your uh, you you feel a little more encouraged and capable uh, that said i w- i would say that you know knowing maybe digital electronics like flip flops you know the fact that zeros and ones are like transistors on and off i think that is enough because embedded programming starts uh, or rather it 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 is based on an abstraction layer of the isa instruction set architecture at least as seen or rather at least when it comes to the cpu it's based on that you know you you just have to write the right instructions and the cpu would execute those and the second key abstraction um that i think people should know in in order to be able to you know uh, write embedded software or at least be useful on an embedded systems team is the idea of uh, you know memory mapped io the fact that you can read and write to a memory address and as a result of that the hardware will do something so those are like the two abstractions i feel people should be comfortable with or you know, keep in mind um, but yeah apart from that i think any pretty much anyone can do embedded systems i i think uh, and also i feel with embedded system there is this uh, you know dopamine hits involved which mohammed was you know pointing to which is you see something moving something light up uh, you know uh, something happen in a very mysterious kind of way which only you know so for example the speed memory read write speed the way it gets influenced uh, based on enabling and disabling the caches but well, that's something that you know very few people know and knowing that is very satisfying as well. um so yeah i would say being able to understand code having the willingness to be able to understand languages like you know c++ c assembly just the willingness of it uh, of it and the fact that you know trying to find out what abstractions are used uh, much like you know the isa abstraction or the memory map io abstraction i think those are the stepping stones and uh, that at least you know eases the uh is is the effort or now um, somewhere it, it can give the person the peace that they need not know more than that if you know that much uh, you are useful 
you can you know contribute on a team and then you know curiosity will take you places you'll end up learning analog if you want to you'll end up learning digital electronics if you want to uh, you might be end up learning you know how to write better code at the assembly level or the c level if you want to. yeah i have to go back to the point that project mentioned which is ember it kind of you know stands on that thin line of uh, hardware and software so you get to talk to both the side of uh, uh, engineering uh, teams you talk to the hardware guys turns out they don't understand a lot of software terms so you explain them that they will value you for that then the software guys like higher up like the, the operating system and uh, up guys they don't understand the hardware terms and they got to deal with that so you're the ones who can explain them that so you get brownie points from there so you i was get, about you, to say that yeah get brownie points, points from both the both system. sides right so, so uh, yeah that's uh, another thing that i like about embedded system and it's just coming to me now there are a lot of embedded systems related jobs out there there are a lot of engineers who do embedded systems uh, it is just that uh, there are not a lot of people who come online and talk about it right so on the internet mm-hmm. we don't have as many uh, the volume of content around embedded system and the chatter about it is a lot less compared to you know general computer science and uh, web development kind of thing so yeah that's about it but it's it's a very vibrant field okay. yeah so i don't and i suppose you know anything? as we move towards the uh, you know era of iot ai ml edge computing i think embedded systems is going to be the the center point of all, all of, of it that. yeah 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 definitely uh any other questions comments yeah, and, and, so uh, you know good you know i mean uh, let's let's say that you want to join a company or any any good company right all all the things that you need i mean uh, all all the thing that you need is to have the willingness to you know learn something new and then have the fundamentals right yeah and then also accept your flaws that okay i don't know this and i want yeah, to learn this learn right? Yeah. Yeah. right so i think that if you have that attitude then you know you would go along you know, you know. yeah 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 that kind of brings us to the next topic of discussion which i was fishing for but i remembered now which was uh, one of one other problem that i think discourages uh, you know the general um students of you know gentle enthusiasts is how do they start with embedded system how does like in case of computer science and web development you just take a laptop you know with you and start to do with the programming you kind of see the results instantly but how about embedded system you know you, do you need special equipment uh, you know need some cash to get started how does that work so what are what are your inputs i'll go with rajat first because i know he has something on his mind go ahead rajat okay i just uh, the technology has evolved a lot mm. so definitely if you go back to old days actually even in when i started working it was simulators we used to use id simulators you don't need a hardware to do it you know people used to have simulators in the id is here you can simulate some extent of a soc majorly it was the cpu and some mm-hmm. of the components were missing but there were other tools that you could use but i guess as the technology has evolved this has become easier and easier if you have a board definitely that's the best way to go around but let's right. say if you want to just experiment about something and you are not willing to spend and commit to a board uh, there are several emulators like emo vnode that can be used and i have been using them extensively like even for our course uh, when I was waiting for our boards to arrive. I just mm-hmm. downloaded Vnode, started Vnode, and developed on Pi six the uh, labs on Vnode. And when my mm-hmm. board came, I just ran those labs on uh, STM kit, and it just worked. So mm-hmm. that just gives an example where technology stands today. Right. So the entry point to embed has reduced and reduced. And going back to the olden stories that my senior used to tell us, it used to be the barrier to enter embed was even more. Right. When you will have a processor sitting on a lap somewhere. Right. 
the board will cost you thousands of dollars so not right. you cannot afford like <laughs> thousands of boards just two three boards work and 10 12 engineers working on it right time right. sharing it but i guess that barrier has gone down now development boards are cheap i guess the stm board that we took costed around what 12 dollars mm -hmm. and even if you don't want to do it, that you can download renode that's completely free right so just take a machine start typing start learning Right, right. Do you do you guys have any comments, uh, Mama mm. Yeah, I think uh, I completely agree with Rachel. Like we have like world class simulators right now, which are all open source. We can do pretty much everything on a simulator, which you can do on a board. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you if, let's say. Uh, uh, many people have this perception of embedded meaning, you know, touch basing on uh, hardware, you know, actually seeing things move or glow. I would suggest, you know, even that has become very cheap now. You get like a microcontroller kit in, you know, around at around what, 500 rupees now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Just True. get there, I guess. And I think all would agree uh, that the hello world for embedded system is uh, blinking glowing LED, LED. Yeah. yeah blinking an led right but yeah. believe me it gives immense pleasure when you see an led blink by your own code even though the code is like what three four lines it it gave me immense pleasure much i mean the pleasure was much more than i you know seeing hello world uh written in c or you know any other language because right. you see something glow and you're like hey i made yeah. this glow yeah yeah uh, it's it's very cool and yeah. then, you know, you just keep on, you know, uh, what I used to do was try to save some money, you know, from my pocket money, add, you know, keep on adding few of the sensors, like, you know, ultrasonic sensor, maybe then uh, uh, a temperature, thermistor, sensor, uh, temperature sensor, yeah, you yeah. know, all sorts. Yeah. Uh, you get those components, you know, try one by one and get that awesomeness, you know, that awe, uh, that, uh, that feeling of something moving, something uh, some actual, even, even touching that temperature sensor and going the values, you know, uh, seeing the values go up, go up. like feeling yeah. a, you, I could literally feel the heat getting transmitted, you know, from my body to that sensor, you know, it, it's, it just worked in crazy ways. But I would say, you know, those things really help in, 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 right. in people getting started. And once you are, you know, in, in, in that field, then I think, yeah, you can just, uh, yeah. Just learn, keep on learning. We're talking about thermal sensors. You know. <laughs> they have a story of their own yes. on an SOC. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So hey, if I just good. pitch in, mm -hmm. so if good. I just pitch in, another same fact for software engineers, hello world just works. For embedded engineers, getting yes. hello world works itself is a pain. <laughs> you need it's to calculate resistance, you know, all, yeah, it's, it's, Ohm's law would come in play and it's very, very nice. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I wanted to add one more point. Mm -hmm. I think the embedded engineers sort of do a very nice job in concealing all of this, you know, to the end user, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, hey, you know, you... Hmm. go ahead, follow. Uh, I have been asked, so when I had just joined my first job, I was working on, you know, Bluetooth a microcontroller. So I have had people ask me, hey, what is there in Bluetooth, you know, uh, removing. <laughs> They just showed me their smartphone. They turned on and off Bluetooth and it's like, hey, what's there in it? I'm like, yeah, there, there's nothing. In it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, so, you guys have you know, abstracted away a lot of complex stuff. And I, I suppose, you know, in, in some sense, it can also bring a sense of fear on, on people who are wanting to start them. Right. Because yeah. that sense of, uh, because we have abstracted out uh, so much, there is literally like, we don't know what to start from, where to start from. Right? It's exactly. like, hey, exactly. completely black box. Correct. And I think that that is the key where a lot of engineers, uh, well, software and electronic mm -hmm. engineers also, do not attempt to learn or are discouraged. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I let Potentially great go. engineers may be moving away, you know, from embedded field and, yeah. you know, just yeah. software. I mean. True, it's something true, if we can good. help in any way, I think that would be the main aim of this yes. uh, podcast. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, Dave, do you have any comments on this? How one can start to learn embedded, just in case? 
Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, you know, before joining Google, I did not have any, you know, uh, you know, experience working on any board or mm -hmm. any hardware component. Mm -hmm. But I do have experience, you know, working on understanding the Linux code mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that directly programs the hardware, right? So let's say if someone is coming from CS background, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, you know, going through the Linux kernel and, you know, and understanding each component, how, uh, you know, it is being programmed, right? Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot about hardware, right? right? Though it's not an experiment, you cannot, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, you definitely going through the code, yeah. you would not have that, you know, uh, you know, LED blinking, but yeah, it, it would be a good learning if, you know, mm. you would, you know, essentially know, okay, uh, you know, this component was implemented this way right. and why, yeah. and, you know, to getting to the answer of the why, you would understand why, you know, you know what was the hardware, right? And mm -hmm. how it was being programmed. Right. So, yeah. But I'm going to kind of elaborate that answer a little more because okay. when you suggested, kind of, you know, go and explore the Linux kernel, I would put a boundary right. there. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the kernel code is huge, you know, and browsing yeah. that is a kiss of death. And yeah. uh, it's an exercise uh, which is interesting. So what yeah. I what I would add on to your statements is maybe folks can try to write a character device driver and mm. explore something called the I octaves, uh, how to mm. you know manage the input and output. I think those pursuit would also be you know, very helpful. And maybe mm -hmm. I'll just now give my take on how one can go about learning a build system. I mean, definitely, if you are, if you so, if so you just to, sorry, go ahead. To add to that point, so mm -hmm. I started, you know, so from the software background, mm -hmm. I started, you know, in the Linux kernel, started, yes. you know, learning about how a process management Works. happens, how a memory right. management happens. Right. Through that, you know, you start liking the code, and then yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. you go into that, right? So yeah. That that was my you know take on. Fair, fair. Yeah, I recall you were working on the sysfs or some right. sort of thing yeah. at the starting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I'll I'll add my take on it. So I was going to mention that if you know a laptop is all that people have, then you know running QMU or Renode is the way to go. That's how you can get started. And this is only the programming part of embedded system. You know, you can try and write uh, code in assembly or assembly and C that works very close to the hardware. You can try and debug using that emulator. So all of that good stuff can be done using emulator, which by the way, I think is enough if you're wanting to get onto a team uh, of embedded systems, uh, which is embedded software essentially, right? So that I think is a pretty good playground. And once you're comfortable with that, for example, Raspberry Pi's emulation is available on QMU. So you can actually try and program Raspberry Pi from scratch if you want, right? And there are other tutorials on uh, YouTube which will guide you through that. But one can try that on the laptop itself, no extra you know, uh, money to be spent. Now, if you want to go a little bit beyond, then you know, Mohammed and Rajat both pointed to that, which is, you can get a board which costs like 10 to $20, something like that, one to 2,000 rupees. And you can try and program that board. You know, that typically boards these days are either, you know, ARM M CPU based uh, or RISC-V based. Uh, any one of them is fine. Just knowing how, was, you know, how to boot a processor and write code on it, that takes you a long way. Now coming to the code browsing and the languages of choice, um, C definitely is still the dominant language in embedded system software programming. And a little bit of assembly is also used, not that you should know the assembly for a processor. It's just that, you know, know that it is used in some very you know, specific conditions. C++ is something I've seen from where being written in, uh, but I've only seen like two or three examples of it. Uh, so C++ helps, but know that if you focus on C, uh, you know, chances of you being able to get on an embedded programming software team are much higher. And then the last thing I wanted to touch upon is uh, Arduino is not embedded. 
Okay, it's an it, it's an it's an introduction to the embedded world. Yeah. Uh, but turns out, Arduino folks have done such a great job of abstracting away hardware programming that you can you just have like all libraries available. It's again just API calls. And while you can go about programming Arduino and you know get things moving in real life, move like glow LEDs, move motors, all of that. Uh, I think it's still uh, it's it's like an advanced way of learning uh, embedded system thing. Um, what you can try and do is you know get started with Arduino. You know, have a feel of what it is to glow LEDs, turn motors, read sensors, output on you know whatever uh, other actuators. You can start off with that and then slowly go towards trying and programming a controller straight on an emulator or on a real board. And specifically ARM M class controllers or RISC V, I think that goes a long way. And uh, at least in you know my career, every time I have interviewed somebody, if people told me that they have experience with these controllers, then somewhere they do, at least in my head, they did get like a you know check or brownie point. Um but yeah, then those are those are like my thoughts on how one can get started. Now I'm, I've noticed we are about an hour in, so I'm thinking we might want to cap the recording for today or the podcast for today as an hour. So go ahead and just pitch, yeah, just, yeah. Just to add, so even if you have an ID new, right? What you have to understand is even though people have abstracted it out, it's still a mm. basic 80 mega 28, uh, 328 mm. on that. What you can do is, it, does it mean that the board is almost useless if you want to do uh, yeah. advanced embedding? No. What yeah. you can do is you can take that board and not use the Arduino SDK. Yeah. Okay. Now that you can go thing. directly to a MPLAB ID or an Atmos Studio and connect it. Those uh, those uh, completely understand the, the Arduino interface. And you can start writing in a bare metal C or assembly format and keep going from there. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I should have mentioned that. Arduino is not like completely useless. It's, yeah. it's just that you know you have to be very careful uh, in terms of deliberately crossing that boundary of the Arduino IDE. If you do that, then you know welcome yeah. to the complexity of embedded systems and the fun associated yeah. with it. Uh, if not, then uh, I I think there is like this danger of uh, you know incorrectly assuming that you know a lot of embedded when you mm-hmm. really uh, don't. Okay. So that is that is my opinion on Arduino, but uh, that's yeah. that. Now, any uh, you know, I'm thinking we are three minutes short of an hour. I'm wanting to con- wanting us to conclude the podcast for today. Uh, can you hint at uh, topics and things that we you know we would want to cover in the future? Go ahead. I any, mean, uh, definitely. I think uh, what I would want to do is revise or again. Uh, uh, see this podcast and you know just fetch out the terms which we used which might not have been you know evident yeah. mm-hmm. and then okay. maybe explain that in the next uh, podcast ah, uh, fair fair so we kind of build one. on top, top of yeah. the keywords we used in this mm-hmm. podcast fair. Uh, so one of the things I think the biggest challenge that you face once you move out of college into a semiconductor industry or mm-hmm. industry that builds SOC is that suddenly things are not available on Google. Yeah. All you have is a 2000 page document and a board lying on your desk and no clue on what to do. Right. And maybe a so, senior who is hopefully helpful. Yeah. <laughs> a senior who may be hopefully helpful. But I guess uh, the biggest thing that you have to learn is uh, when you enter such an industry is how to navigate through that 2000 page document right. Right. and not to get lost in details. Right. There are things that you want to look into this 2000 docu- 2000 page document that will help you on day one. Mm-hmm. And maybe there are those things that will help you on day 100 and not on day one. Exactly. And since these documents are writing in such uh, written in such way, it's easy to get lost in details mm-hmm. right. and get frustrated over time. You know what? Uh, should I really read 500 page document to get started to toggle a LED on a device? <laughs> right. right. So At least that was the... Yes, I was, I was mentioning that was the thing I ran into when I was, you know, starting off with embedded programming. Even yeah. though I'm an electrical engineer, yes, but you know, again, none of this was taught to me back in my college. So yeah, I was lost in the documentation. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I guess uh, we should talk about how to navigate through those documents effectively. And mm -hmm. let's say you have a code and on a day one, you want to really do hello world like software engineers do, you know what, just install Python, write a print a hello world and it will print. We should be able to do a podcast in which we explain that, let's say on the first day you get a hardware, how can you toggle mm -hmm. a LED yeah. on the day zero? Yeah. Yeah, it may not be a five minute task. It's a five minute task if you use the SDK, but SDK, but then again, it that's loses the its significance. Right? Yeah, that's the Arduino yeah. equivalent. Right? But may not be like five minutes, but let's say within a day zero, usually yeah. we call it day zero, get right. the LED talk line. Right. Yeah. Right. Dave, do you have any comments before we close the call for today? Yeah, yeah I think I agree with, uh, you know, what Mohammed mentioned that we build on top of what we have discussed today and mm -hmm. then, you know, go ahead. With it. Okay. okay. So for then the next podcast, we have two ways of moving forward. We iterate over and elaborate the keywords that we used in this podcast. And then we kind of go towards the documentation and maybe the anatomy of, you know, on the mm -hmm. system, what to look for, what mm -hmm. are the common things, what are the different things. Uh, how to go about learning more about the common things and so on and so forth perfect i think then uh, for this podcast maybe we can call it a day uh, you know, we can close the call and for those who yeah. stayed back this long you know thank you for uh, staying back this long and hopefully yeah, you know, this was useful and we'll continue to bring more value thank you to listen to you know four guys rambling <laughs> about yeah. embedded yeah. systems <laughs> Man, this is the first time for me to look at yeah. you and look at the camera. Just, yeah. It's a little bit awkward, but I think yes. we'll get used to it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll go okay. ahead and stop the recording now. Sorry, Mama, you wanted to say something? No, I was okay. just telling bye to our potential okay. audience. If, okay. if we have not scared <laughs> them already. Yes. 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 Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the recording now. And then, yeah, okay, let me do that.